The enemy has changed tactics several times over the last three months. I missed the first phase due to the treatment of my leg injury. I missed the stage where the enemy was dropping their prisoners and mass like meat when they were making 14 infantry assaults a day, crawling like locusts trying to break into our trenches. I have my own specific job. I am an aerial scout. But in addition, I saw combat operations from different sides. During this rotation, I managed to be a scout, an assistant chief sergeant, a combat controller and many others. It's easier to say which role I just did not try on. All because there were many wounded at various posts in these battles, and I performed various functions. We operated drones, evacuated boys, learning to use AGS, SPG and mortars. We could directly make the enemy hell with these means. Everything had to be learned on the go. I have always said that a good soldier is a soldier who is always learning. We even stood at observation posts too. The good old infantry movement did not escape me either. It was necessary to help the boys. Our aerial reconnaissance flew, grenades were dropped, targets were found, targets were transmitted. We adjusted the artillery day and night. It happened that we had to fly all day long. And then at night uh, we had to raise the night bird again, because the enemies are coming somewhere. Interestingly, there was a moment when the company commander left for the first time in a long time, and the chief sergeant and I remained and replaced him. And here began a nine-hour assault on neighboring positions on the left and right at the same time. I had to act as a combat controller, although none of us had such experience before. Roughly speaking, we thought for nine hours from our company. We analyzed all the incoming information, managed the use of defense means at the company level and gave information to the headquarter. We tried to do everything so that neighboring positions were not captured. Here was such a situation that if this did not work out, our guys would have found themselves in a surrounded trap. It started at 6, no, at 9 o'clock in the night. We equipped ourselves with walkie-talkie, tablets and worked like that all night. And already at 6.30 in the morning, I gave the command to my guys who worked with AGS and SPG to go rest, because the positions were fought back. This is from such an interesting thing that happened. I know that during that night, in total, our defense forces killed nearly 60 enemies. Maybe even more. These are interception data. I will also remember the story from the chart of our air reconnaissance. I remember our coordinator writes, Guys, there the scoundrel went to shit, got hit by a grenade and became the 300th. <laughs> At first, they were not afraid to attack our positions with prisoners and if they were carcasses. Over time, the number of these prisoners available decreased and they began to use them more intelligently. To use sabotage groups with professionals, to attack with smaller assault groups. That is, they began to attack more thoughtfully, because they did not succeed with frontal attacks. I heard from neighboring units about many cases when our enemies disguised themselves in our uniforms, used our insignia. This did not happen in our direction, but colleagues saw it. And this also led to sad consequences when they managed to go deep inside our positions. Well, they are changing, they are learning to fight differently. What saves us is that we finally have our own counter-battery. It really works and works constantly. There are equipment, artillery that can fight back, which was never seen before in such quantities in the directions where I was. Well, plus their artillery is a little tired. Judging by what we can understand from radio intercepts, they don't really want to launch frontal attacks, especially on our part of the front, because they understand what they can get in the teeth. They are a little afraid here, but I understand it's not like that everywhere. And they are trying to put pressure on those positions where there are less prepared troops. Well, look, they have been trying to take Bakhmut for a very long time with great forces, and so far they have not succeeded in anything. At one time it was the fortress city of Serodonetsk, which stood conditionally for two months under the pressure of an incredible number of Russian soldiers who attacked it and the city was guarded by our much weaker forces in that situation. 
and at the same time the worst option did not happen. Even after all the arterias to the city in the form of bridges were cut off, therefore at that time it was unreasonable to hold the city, losing entire units. This situation will not arise here. And plus, I can't say we are reached parity in artillery, but at least they no longer have such a massive advantage in it. There is no such thing as a barrage on fire coming at us and we have nothing to respond to. Everyone can see on the internet how our artillery works in this direction. In particular, Heimers, Krabs and 777 are used. I saw the same Krabs. The concentration of such large impressive means is much greater than it was before. And the main thing is that our people have already learned to fight with it. I can say that the occupiers are starving for shells, but they can't afford such a barrage of fire as before. If we get the promised new tanks, infantry fighting vehicles, etc. now, I think it could be a huge game changer. As for the superiority in the number of people, well, they can again send a crowd of mobilized. We can't be frightened by freshly mobilized, unmotivated soldiers of the Russian Federation without any means, without equipment, without understanding where they went and why. It will be difficult, but the end of this war is not far off. I actually came from another country to get into this war. I haven't lived here for 10 years, but I made this decision to fight irrevocably on February 24. Even before, I just understood that if the war started, I would be here. In 2014, I was still very young and could say that this is not my war, but now I could not afford to say so. I understood that this is my land, and looking at what they are doing to other cities, I don't want this to happen to my native home. My relatives fled from Bucha. My grandmother moved to Bucha a month before the invasion. She, my aunts, uncle and small children had to leave, become refugees because of what happened in Bucha. I now have many friends there. My girlfriend is in Kyiv. I really don't want them to go through all this again. And actually, like every man, I believe that it's my duty to protect my country.